What is your vision of heaven? Do you think there is such a place? Would it be a place of awe-inspiring beauty and elaborate architecture with ethereal light and music? Do you imagine dazzling displays of gold and silver with an array of countless precious stones? This is certainly true in a measure, but it is not the complete picture. Perhaps you see heaven as the internal surface of a huge concave dome that extends out over the entire earth. As the edge of the dome approaches the horizon, it sometimes gives the feeling that it will fall short, but it never does. It always covers the earth beneath it. Almost all humans of earth have a certain impression of heaven. While we contemplate the possibilities, we need to keep in mind that various terms are used to describe heaven. The single word heaven emphasizes its overall unity. Other expressions seem to relate to its numerous aspects or parts. For example, the terms heavenlies or heavenly places describe a number of different places, all of which are included under the heading heaven. These places may be given over at several times to different beings and different activities. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 12 verses 2 to 4, I know a man in Christ who, 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows. Such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows. How he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words which it is not lawful or not possible for a man to utter. This verse indicates that there are three heavens overall, one immediately above the other. Third heaven is what Paul describes as the highest. In fact, it is the most sacred place in the universe, as it is the place of paradise, where God lives as a personal dwelling, the place where God dwells alone. This passage gives us the idea often associated with heaven, purity or holiness. The words uttered there are so sacred that they cannot be mentioned outside. Paradisos, paradise, is the Greek word for a garden. It illustrates God's garden in heaven. For sinners who have repented and persevered in faith, paradise is their ultimate destination. During his death on the cross, Jesus promised the penitent thief that their days in paradise would be spent together. And Jesus said unto him, Verily, I say unto thee, Today, shalt thou be with me in paradise. Luke 23 verse 43 Almost all residents of the earth have an impression of heaven. It is important to note that the book of Revelation contains an account of an area known as the mid-heaven or the middle of heaven. It appears that this describes a large area in which multiple types of living things come and go, depending on the type of being they are. A number of powerful beings who proclaim themselves from the heart of heaven are described in the following verses. And I looked and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, literally mid-heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, 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 to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about the sound. Revelation 8 verse 13 Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, literally mid-heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Revelation 14 verse 6 Then I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, literally mid-heaven, come and gather together for the supper of the great God. Revelation 19 verse 17 The Greek word for the mid-heaven is mesronema, which is simply the word for the middle portion of heaven. It is possible that this is the second heaven. Finally, we might conclude that the visible heaven, which is visible to our natural eyesight, is the first heaven. The inhabitants of the earth are familiar with this heaven to some extent. What about heaven's inhabitants? Who are these creatures? Angels are the most common name given to these creatures. Angel is derived from the Greek noun angelos, which means messenger. Therefore, angels are seen as messengers sent from heaven. 
Despite this, not all angels have the capacity to act as messengers. They have a number of other potential purposes regardless of their tasks. They are sent out by God for his purposes. Scripture reveals, however, that Satan also sends out evil angels for his own purposes. Sometimes there may be clashes or conflicts between the angels of God and the angels of Satan. In the book of Daniel, Scripture describes some of these conflicts. There is no escaping the fact that today's world, as we see it, is a war zone, a hostile area that we are forced to live in. Furthermore, this conflict is not limited to Earth. Furthermore, it plays a crucial role in everything that happens in heaven. There are three main tasks for God's angels. The first thing to note is that they are God's messengers. The second reason why they are God's agents is that they are sent forth to protect those who are in danger here on earth. The angels that protect us from harm are normally described as guardian angels. Matthew 18 verse 10 states, Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones, for I say unto you that in heaven, their angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. It is in this verse that Jesus refers to children who have angels who cannot leave heaven without seeing the face of the Father constantly. This implies that the Father's watchful eye directs the angels to potentially vulnerable children. Thirdly, there are warrior angels who are at odds with others. Christians believe that heaven is a place where unbroken peace, harmony, elegance, and worship can be found. While this may be true for the third heaven, it may not be true for the first and second heavens. Scripture paints a different picture of what is taking place in the second heaven. Many warring angels, some serving God and others serving Satan, fight here sometimes as we have already mentioned. It is primarily in the heavenly regions that such conflict takes place. There is also the place where Satan leaks his slanderous accusations against those who serve the Lord on earth, and it is in this place that Satan does most of his work. In Revelation 12 verse 10, it says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which has accused them before our God day and night. The angel describes him as the accuser of our brothers who accuses them day and night before our God. Throughout this scripture, Satan is predicted to be cast down from heaven. However, until that happens, it is clear that he is still occupying someplace in the heavens and spewing malicious accusations against God's people. This verse warns the inhabitants of the earth about what they might expect and the devil is ultimately cast down. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Revelation 12 verse 12 These verses refer to a period when Satan has only a short time to fulfill them, they may be close at hand, but they haven't happened yet. There is no evidence that the events described have occurred. Thus, we need to be realistic when it comes to Satan's current activities. Christian writers often state that Satan is confined to hell, but that is not true. There are two satanic princes who rule over hell, those who are named Death and Hades. However, Satan himself roams freely throughout the universe. Revelation 20 verse 13 says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. This is plainly depicted in Job 1 verses 6 to 7. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down it. There is a common misconception among Christians that Satan is bound to hell, however, this is not the case. The main difference between earth and heaven is that this world has been corrupted by sin, while heaven has not. As man's sin permeates the earth, 
God's glory permeates heaven. God, the glory of heaven, created earth so that humans could care for and enjoy it. Despite God's instructions regarding earthly things, Adam and Eve chose to listen to Satan instead. It was their disobedience, their rebellion against God, that separated them from the fellowship of God. But the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Nor can the gift of God be compared with the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if, by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. For just as through the disobedience of the one man the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man the many will be made righteous. Romans 5 verses 15 to 19 Therefore, the disease of sin has been passed from generation to generation as a result of this. The Bible says, And God looked upon the earth, and behold it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Genesis 6 verse 12 The earth is also defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Isaiah 24 verses 5 to 6 The earth groans because it has been marred by sin. Like a crippling disease, sin distorts and devastates everything it touches. Sin corrupts and divides, but heaven declares the glory of the Lord. Psalm 19 verse 1 Heaven is the throne of God. Isaiah 66 verse 1 Because He is a holy and sinless God, He cannot tolerate sin or look at it without bringing judgment upon it. But his love is so great and powerful that he has made a way to remove the curse of sin, the guilt that stains our hearts and corrupts our world. In Christ, God crucified sin on the cross and redeemed mankind from its penalty. It was he who died in our place, taking the judgment we deserve, presenting us faultless to his Father in heaven. Christ is the only one who can bridge heaven and earth, making him the only Savior of the world. The Bible says, By one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Romans 5 verse 19 In spite of our best efforts, we are sinners by birth, sinners by choice, and sinners by practice. There is good news for us because God has made a way for us to be saved by the grace of His love and mercy. Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9 says, and this is his glorious gift to the people in a fallen world. The difference between heaven and earth lies in the fact that Jesus Christ left the glory of heaven and came to this sin-infested earth for one reason only, and that was in order to save us from eternal punishment. That makes all the difference to God, heaven, and us on earth. We will see many glorious sights in heaven, but the most powerful of all will be the Savior of the world in his glory. Your eyes will see the King in His beauty and view a land that stretches afar. Isaiah 33 verse 17 When Jesus Christ pulled back the curtain of heaven and instructed the Apostle John to write down what he saw, he gave us a glimpse of what it is like to be in heaven. Then I saw a lamb. I heard every creature in heaven, singing to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Revelation 5 verses 6 and 13 In our human nature, it is not unusual to have fantasies about what heaven would look like. In spite of this, God has his reasons for giving us only a taste of the place where he will dwell forever. Such majesty cannot be adequately described by human language, as it is too vast for words. Heaven's sunlight will dim the magnificence of all of Earth's possessions, causing their splendor to fade. 
As a result, John could only express it through analogies. The brilliance was as clear as crystal, like a jasper jewel. Revelation 21 verse 21 And the twelve gates were twelve pearls, every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold as it were transparent glass. On earth, streets are made of gravel and asphalt, and windows are made of glass. John, however, writes about the transparent golden streets. Heaven is a place where everything is made new. It is only a snapshot of what is to come that we are given. To comprehend such glory, we must undergo a heavenly transformation. In eternity, the clouded things of earth will become transparent. Only he knows about them now. Let your thoughts be filled with the glory of heaven while we practice patience. You will be sustained by them until the day your eyes are fully opened. According to Peter, those who have a hope in heaven, you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 2 Peter 1 verse 11 When he extends his arms inviting his people in, he will turn to his Father and say, And the glory which thou givest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. John 17 verse 22 As we look at his nail-scarred hands, we will fall at his feet and weep in joy, praising his wonderful name. That's what heaven will be like. I the Lord search the heart and test the mind, to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Jeremiah 17 verse 10 The Bible tells us that the Lord searches our hearts. Many people spend their lives doing good deeds, believing they are serving God, but in reality, they have very little time to spend with Him in the process. In fact, many of them are spending far more time on social media than they are searching for wisdom and guidance from the Lord through prayer. There is no time for God and their hearts are far from Him. The Lord probes every person's heart. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord, ponders the hearts. Proverbs 21 verse 2. Salvation cannot be earned for one thing. As Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9 states, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. The gift God gave us was sending His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. The grace of God covers our sins. It won't matter if you're a loving person, a good person, or even the volunteer of the year, we've all been born with a sinful nature. So Jesus' sacrifice was the only way to remove our sins so we could have eternal life with a holy God. It does not mean, however, that we never need to ask for forgiveness from God. We need to, and we can, pray to Jesus Christ directly. It is time for prayer. The Heavenly Father, we pray that you will awaken within us the fullness of your Holy Spirit in the mighty name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Assist us in developing a closer relationship with the Holy Spirit, living in his power and using his gifts to increase our relationship with him. Jesus gave us a promise in your words. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. John 14 verse 26 Help me to learn that I am not capable of comprehending everything and that this is okay because the Holy Spirit knows everything. Give us the Holy Spirit and His understanding of everything that happens in our lives. In your name, I ask these things. As the sun rises every day against the darkness of night, please bring me clarity through the Holy Father's light. My Heavenly Father, grant me peace of mind and calm in my troubled heart. My soul is like a stormy sea. I can't seem to find stability in myself. Allow me to find my purpose and walk the path you have set before me with energy and clarity of mind. My God, I trust in your love, and I know that you will help me through this time. 
Just as the sun rises each day against the darkness of the night, may the light of God bring me clarity. In your name, I pray. Our kind Father, may your Holy Spirit grant me the power and power of Christ's mind so that I can fully enter your neighborhood. Please give us strength to stand above every test and provocation. I ask you to mold me into a faithful follower of Christ, Lord. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Thank you for being here and may God bless you. If you found this content valuable, I kindly request your support through subscription. By doing so, you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. Together, let's enlighten more minds and expand our understanding.